Welcome to the Fostering Change Podcast, Season 3. I'm Rob Shear, the founder of Comfort Cases and your host. Together, we have made such a difference in the world. We've met with leaders and change makers in the foster care system. We've met with charities and philanthropists, celebrities, authors, and so much more. We'll continue to bring you guests who will share how together, as a community, we can bring about change. Welcome once again to Fostering Change. So you all know that I have been so, so excited about this interview. You know, I truly do believe that people are put in each other's lives for a reason. You know, um, I have a deep faith when it comes to what I should be doing on the path of my life and who I should actually um, stand next to. Well, I have to tell you, I was so, so lucky that a couple of years ago, I was able to meet one of my inspirations, um, someone who actually truly Truly, when she talks it, she does it. And and you've all heard me talk about her. Um, I've talked about her in videos. I've talked about her, you know, in interviews. Um, what helps me keep moving each day? You know, as a public speaker and somebody who's an advocate for children in foster care, um, it's hard. And let me tell you what's hard about it is having to constantly know whether or not you are moving that needle, whether or not you're truly making a difference, or are you just talking? And with my friend, I can tell you, she's moving the needle. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so, so excited to have my friend Leanne Tui on our Fostering Change podcast. Leanne, welcome. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. You're going to make me cry. I kind of would like to take you on the road with me to do my introductions because I think that we would do well together. We might we might have to do an act or something together. We got we might have to take this on the road together because we're I think we're both so passionate about many, many of the same things. Yeah, and you know, I really do. And you know, that's funny that you say that. So first of all, everybody, it's, you know, it's National Foster Care Awareness Month. And um, Leanne, you don't actually know this, and we'll talk about this um, off the air, but I actually had someone reach out to me just yesterday and said, do you think that you and Leanne Tui could come and have a conversation on stage for a bunch of students? There's like 900 students who truly think that they could be inspired. So we're going to have to talk about that. Oh, gosh, that would be great. That would be great. Kids, yeah, kids are never too young to, uh, because actually I think that uh, young adults are a great point of reference because they're the first ones that look around and say, I see a need here. They see the kid eating by themselves in the lunchroom. They see the needs before maybe people in a position of authority even see that. And I've found many times when I've talked to guidance counselors and just people, uh, guardians of litem, just anyone that has to do something in the world of foster care, that they garnish a great deal of information from, you know, the, we, we you have no clue, I promise you, there are kids in your students' classrooms in their schools that are homeless or in foster care that you probably don't even know about. So many kids try to mask it, they're embarrassed. So I would love to do that because it would be great to talk to these kids to say, hey, here's who you need to talk to, here's who you can get in touch with, because don't ever be afraid to help somebody. And I think that, you know, they're never too young to start. So I would love to do that. You know what? I agree with you. Um, I was just telling some a uh, group of people the other day, um, a woman raised her hand and she said, um, I don't ever see any kids from foster care that are homeless. And I reminded them that children who are homeless, that are experiencing homelessness, do not stand at a corner. They're blending in at your malls, at your shopping centers, at your public libraries. So they're blending in because I think a lot of it's fear. I remember when I was homeless. That was one of my biggest fears is that someone would find out that I was homeless and then I would be put into like a, a detention center or something. So I would go to the public library or hang out at the mall. Um, and I think we see that more often, but I think that people don't realize there is a larger number of children who are homeless and that are experiencing homelessness or that are in foster care and we don't even know it. 
I know you mentioning public libraries. That's very interesting because we have been involved in renovating public libraries and doing some things with them. And people go, what do you, that's antiquated. That's outdated. Why in the world would you want to be involved and spend money on, uh, on a public library? And I'm like, you have no clue that it's clueless written across your forehead because the people that use public libraries for things other than a resource, periodicals, checking books out, it, the numbers are endless. It, it is, they are so used by people. The computer systems, we just replaced computers, the foundation in a, in a particular library. People line up every day to use those for job applications, just for, for a myriad of different things. And so this is just kind of a PSA, support your public library. Oh, you have I no agree. idea what people use those for, for the restrooms, to just, just, just a tremendous amount of things. So they're not antiquated. They need to be updated. There's very little funding given to them. So we found that we can pair corporations like with a library and you can go in and, and look, People always go, I don't know what to do. How do I make a difference? Where can I plug myself in? I'm going to tell you one easy way. Go to a public library and cut their grass and trim their bushes and pull their weeds. I think many, many people listening to this are capable of that task. And that's the first thing that we did because the public, the street, the curb appeal that the public was seeing was like, oh, run down, sketchy looking. Yep. So we would try, or the people that we work, we try to go in, fluff the outside of the libraries, cut the grass, weed the flower beds, trim the hedges, throw fresh coat of paint on some things, put a new throw rug down, welcoming at the beginning. And that right there is makes people feel more warm and fuzzy. Those things are easy to volunteer to do. So if you're looking for something to do, get involved at a public library. I'd love you to be involved with foster care because that's what Rob and I are talking about. And that's our passion. And that's the drum that we beat every single day. But there are, if, if that's not your passion, talk to us because we can give you other things that we yes. think you might be passionate about. Yeah. And, and you know, the fact is it's still full, full circle, Leanne. If you look at the number, as you just said, Said, the people who use public libraries. I mean, I know when I was younger, you know, that was my safe space. Um, it opened up at 9 a.m. And on days that, you know, there was no school where I could go and I was homeless, I would literally go into the public library and I could stay there all day. I could, you know, back then we, we didn't have the computers, but I had every book I could read. I had every opportunity to educate my mind. And I will never forget, it was the same library librarian and she would walk over around eight o'clock at night and she would tap me on my shoulder and she would be like you know I have to close now and I would leave the library to go find a place to sleep and that was my safe haven so you're right if you know first of all we're all doers we're all doers we just have to figure out what do we do and as you just right. said may, maybe not everybody has the blood in them like you and i do when it comes to foster care but they want to make a difference and i am a hundred percent with you when it comes to libraries because what i remind people is there is no such thing as a used book no right. such thing as you but it's only a book that's been loved a book right. that's been loved and i know you know you're a best-selling author and and i i think i could probably speak to this I know for me and when with my book, the most flattering thing that anyone can ever do is pass a book on. Right. Oh, I absolutely agree. We have free by the tree in a couple of places in their books, and we encourage people to put books that they have used in them and then uh, they can take a book out. And we're trying to get people to do that in particular neighborhoods. And then that way, it's just an ongoing, it's like a little mini library right there. And we, we lean a little bit, it's it's not like one level. It can be a, a book you can read to your child or a resource book for uh, about geography or mathematics or whatever it is. But I, I, that's another thing that I encourage people to do. Get involved right there in your neighborhood. Things like that are easy to do. You just you know, get some little poster board and put it out there and stick something that you might not want, but someone else will find valuable. And, and books are a wonderful avenue to do that. I feel like a lot of times when we drop them off at big public places, I'm not going to name any names, but we all know what I'm referencing, that they just get kind of lost in the shuffle and then people are having to pay money they don't have for them. And so I think it's if you have uh, books, especially books that can be used for educational purposes and teaching young children and for mothers to use with, the, with their kids for interaction, Set up a system, free by the tree, some kind of system that people can get their hands on these and exchange these books. And uh, that right there in itself is, is a wonderful volunteer project to, to 
to take up. Yeah, and you know, it's one of the reasons why every single comfort cases, and we've done 165,000 cases all over the country. We opened up a center in the UK, um, and we put a book in every single case because we know that the child's journey starts when they've turned that first page. You know, you just made a comment about, you know, um, you know, going into your community. And one of the things I've read where you've said, you know, build a community that inspires you. Explain to me exactly what you mean by that. Well, I mean, I think I've learned at this old age, I, I tell everybody I'm in the fourth quarter now, and I think by the time I've gotten to this point in the game that I've realized that you are kind of like the five people you hang around the most. So I always tell people, look around your circle. If there's not people in there that don't look like you, if there's not, I, I just think that you really should examine like Who's in your sandbox? You need to be around people that inspire you, that lift you up, that make you want to put one foot in front of the other and get out of bed in the morning and get out and do something to make a difference. Because let me tell you, every single day when we get up, our mission should be, in my opinion, what can we do for someone else? Not your entire day encompass with it. It doesn't need to take every single second of the day of 24 hours in it. But at some point, in every single day, you should have the thought in your mind, what can I do today for someone else? I don't care if it's taking the shopping cart back. Yesterday, I was Target. I have to, I mean, I'm at that, you know. I yeah, you love your Target. <laughs> I, I do love my Target. And I true, there was a little lady that was next to me and she was trying to unstick the shopping cart. You know, they stick together right. sometimes. And I said, yeah, I'll do that. And she kind of stepped back and took a big heave ho and got muscles. And I pulled them apart. And she says, I've been trying to do that for five minutes. I really appreciate it. And that's not a big deal. And, and, I, was like, and I walked on and got what I needed. And But, you know, I looked around a few minutes later and here she was. She was coming back through there. And I thought little things, little things make a difference. So when I tell people that, like, I'm not asking you to go out and make cookies and take them to the fire department every day. If you could, you should. And I'm not asking you necessarily to volunteer at a Boys and Girls Club or go to comfort cases and help Rob. If you could, you should. But there is something that we all could do. Build a community that inspires you. Be around like-minded people. Get people involved on your social media. If you are looking at your social media and there's people on there that are like just completely opposite than you, block, delete, get rid of. I'm telling you that my social media is a place of comfort, uh, of it's inspiring and uplifting. I can go on there and ask people something. They're kind, they're generous for the most part. If they're not, block, delete. And I'm just telling you, it, it's, it, it makes a difference. If you're in a community that is like you, that is inspiring, that's uplifting, that wants to be involved in people's life, they want to move the needle and make a difference, it's life-changing for me because I wake up with a smile on my face and a skip in my step. And I'm like going, let's go, man. We got this. We're up. We're out. We're going to do something. We're going to change lives. And do I sound like some rah-rah, happy-go-lucky cheerleader? That's what my community does for me. So it has been a process. It's taken me a while to get here. I, there's been a lot of disgruntles and malcontents. And I'm like, hmm. Because that's not what I want to plug myself into. I don't want to sit around with a group of people that are like, Oh my gosh. Oh, yes, we're, we're in a horrific situation right now in the world we live in. I, I watched uh, this morning the president of Kiev's speech and I tears, he showed a video, tears, my makeup. I mean, I literally was sobbing this morning. We, we live in a bad way right now, but we still have the opportunity to get out and do something to make a difference. And, and I think that we just need to be positive and uplifting and in, in meditation and in prayer and just we, we, we need to be those people, like-minded community. How can we make a difference? Because it would be easy just to cover your head up and go, I'm not dealing with it. This is a lot going on out there. It's a lot of bad juju. I'm just going to stay in my little house and I'm going to stay in my little small comfort zone. And I'm not going to look, nothing good or exciting happens in your comfort zone. So get up, get out, have a like-minded community of people that are inspiring and make you want to do something. And so that's what I mean by that statement. I just feel like we really need to be around like-minded people and build up a community that, that you feel you know, you're comfortable with and a, is in agreement with you in accord and that all people are valuable and that everybody has the ability to make a difference. Yeah, and you know, I, I love that. And as I always say, your community is not your zip code, it's our human race. You Absolutely. Know, um, I, I love the fact that you always say, make it 
purposeful. You got to make everything purposeful. And I love, you know, that. And when you talk about your social media, you know, a couple of years ago, you you would spotlight a child, um, but it wasn't it wasn't what you've been doing now. And now you do this, you know, Forever Family Friday, and you post a young person who is needing a forever family, like you know my five kids here on the wall that all of them came to us and they're in their forever family. Um, you know what made you decide at one moment in that time to say, you know what? We need to see this every Friday. We don't need to just see this during the month of May. We need it every Friday. What What was that? You know the needle needs to be pushed there. You know, honestly, the people that I follow on social media, a lot of the people and my friends, um, some of the organizations I'm involved with, I look at like what Comfort Cases is doing. And I see you guys just, it's like the number just becomes infinite. I mean, it's just like we need more and more of these because Foster care is at an epidemic level right now. And these kids are in it to no fault of their own. They didn't ask to be there. It's not on any of their wish lists. Not, not, there's not one kid in the entire world, not one that woke up and go, gee, I want to ha- be in foster care and I want to be homeless and I, I don't want a mom and dad. No one, no, that, that is not the case. And so you look around and because of nothing that they did, they're not damaged goods. It's nothing that these kids did because of the situation they're in. And I kept thinking, well, I'm just doing this one month. I would be doing it in November, which is National Adoption Month. And we would post a child every day. And I felt like it was just every single day that didn't give people time to think about, oh, this child has these likes. And I have a friend that I think that or my church could get involved or my uh, Bunko group or whatever your group is has somebody that might be interested in that child. So I felt like if I gave it a little bit of time, so I said, well, I'm going to do one every Friday all year long. That way it'll keep it fresh on everyone's mind. And then it'll be con- a continuing that, okay, we know, you know, there's a child coming on Friday. Let me think about someone that, you know, has an interest or that they may know someone. It's such a networking. I mean, I know that my group can't every single Friday you know, find someone for a family for this child. What my hope is, is that every Friday that 10 people will see it and they'll tell 10 more people and the next Friday they'll tell 10 more. And it'll be this rippling effect that we'll have people looking at these kids every single week because there's so many kids and there's so few resources and there's just not enough foster families or foster homes or anything else where to put these kids and they're aging out at an alarming rate. And if they weren't, then you wouldn't have to be, you know, nose to the grindstone all the time because there are so many kids and all they want is a forever family. And you know, better than anyone, age is just a number. I have people all the time, God bless y'all's hearts. You, you adopted, you know, older kids and there is no difference. I literally have had people that are 30 years old go, I just want a family. I just want somebody to be there for me. I want somebody to wish me happy birthday. I want a Christmas present. I want a connection with other people. And it's just crazy because it doesn't matter that, that what their age is. So I just implore people. I mean, it is, it's not easy. There's every state has different laws. We have to jump through hoops and hurdles. And I have wonderful people that work on this. I mean, the minute we, uh, Friday, they're already working on the next week. You've got to get permission and forms and approvals. And ooh, if I could just, ooh, I know. these people, I'm like, what do you mean? You, you know, I'm like, it's like, so you don't want them to, to have more eyes on them? Well, I'm like, oh, I just, I, sometimes I just, my blood boils. And, and, and so I just feel like that if we can talk about this more, these kids, and, and I wish that other people would do the same thing because the only way we're going to get these kids and forever families into loving situations is if people keep talking about it, not my, just my, but there's, a, you can go to America Saves because there's a ton of organizations that have kids posted on their platforms that you can go and look at. And, you know, we peruse through everything else. We TikTok it and we, you know, look at all these other forms of, of, for hours and hours, people are on their phones and spend 10 minutes, find a couple of good organizations that you like. And you never know when you're with a group of people at dinner or, or you're at a business meeting or whatever it might be. And someone goes, you know, there's a, a family that's, that's looking, hey, I just saw a, a kid. Look at this website that they may have uh, some kids that, that you potentially could adopt. So, 
look, it takes a village and we all got to pull the wagon in the same direction. And you could use cliche after cliche after whatever you want to say, but there are kids that are aging out of foster care and they have no means of support. They have no family. They have no structure. They don't have crap. And if that word upsets you, I'm sorry, get over it. I, but well, my point you. is, is that we all have the ability to do something. And if we don't, they're going to turn to drugs, they're going to turn to prostitution, they're going to get into sex trafficking, whatever the horrible, horrific thing that you can think of, that's what's going to happen because there's no other sources. So we are um, going to take a break right now and come back and talk with my friend Leanne. And Leanne, I want to remind everyone that, you know, I'm like you. You do not follow a lot of people. I don't follow a lot of people. I follow those that really inspire me. And I will tell you, people need to follow you because you, you inspire us. But there's one particular story I want to talk about when we return. We'll be right back. So, you know, everybody, I talk about this quite often, um, seeing the expansion that we have at Comfort Cases and to now know that we have a Comfort Cases UK team, I could not be more grateful. But what I'm so excited about is that on May the 24th, my family will be boarding a plane and heading to the UK for a really big event. So I have my friend, Sarah, who is actually also the CEO and the founder of Comfort Cases UK right here with me today. So so Sarah, tell us about what's going on when I get there. Oh my gosh, we are so excited to have you come to the UK. I cannot tell you, we are just so looking forward to meeting you and all your family. And we have got a huge event taking place on the 26th of May. Um, we are introducing comfort cases to our community, to our network, and we are so excited to invite you to talk as our keynote speaker. Um, and we will be doing some fundraising on the evening, but most importantly is to spread the message of how important the work that Comfort Cases UK is trying to do and to continue all the good work that you've already been doing over there in the US. And uh, things are happening really fast here and we just cannot wait for you to share it with us. Well, I will tell you, I'm really, really excited. So listen, everybody, for those who are listening to our podcast or actually you're watching it on YouTube, I want you all to do me one big favor. I want you to go to comfortcasesuk.org and donate. That's exactly right. What you would have donated to Comfort Cases, you know, here, I want you to go donate to comfortcasesuk.org. We truly need to make people understand whether there's a pond that is separating us, we are all one community. So Sarah, I'm excited to come to the UK, sending lots of love and please comfortcasesuk.org. Well, you know what? I tell you, the first half of fostering change has been amazing. Having this conversation, and you know, I want to say this blunt conversation with my friend Leanne. Her and I both are on the same page when it comes to the obstacles that we continue to have to jump through to make sure that children have a forever family. You know, I understand the fact when a child comes into the system, again, remind you, because of a choice that someone else made, I understand that the goal is reunited. Unification. I understand that we want to lift the family up and have that child back with their biological family, but we have to come to the realization that over 120,000 children are not going back. The parents' rights have been severed and they're sitting there waiting for a forever family. And the fact that we have to go through so much to show the picture of them so that maybe just maybe someone would open up their heart and their home. Leanne, I have to tell you, about six months ago, there was a young boy that you posted on your Friday Forever family. And um, my phone literally rang off the hook. Um, and I have a family that's in Florida that I know that I am very close to. Lori, I know you're listening to this. You never miss a podcast. But there was a waiting list of 25 families who wanted this young boy. Now, my friends ended up not adopting the young boy, but because of you and because of you showing that child and because of the fact that I shared it and then someone else shared it, they now have adopted another child. You know, all through that, one of the 120,000 children who are sitting there. But you know, as we took the break, I said there was one particular story that I will not forget. 
And one thing that I love about you is you've never been a chest pounder. You're not someone who shows, look what I do, look what I do. But you did something just recently, not long ago, that moved me in a way that I had not felt. And that is that you brought a it seemed like a family. You didn't show a lot of pictures, but you brought them to Disney World. And I remember um, as a kid who grew up in the system where that wasn't ever happening, where, you know, I was a kid who never had a birthday cake. No one ever wished me happy birthday. Um, but I remember when I took my children to Disney World for the very first time and I lived it in their eyes and it was emotional. And I saw that you did that again. You could have had PR there. I mean, everybody's dying to talk to you and have a camera in front. Of you. you didn't do that. It was something quiet. It was something and you shared a little bits of it on social media. You never said who they were. You never said, can I ask what 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 inspired you to do that? Because that was like I said, that was the most it, it I'm still I get choked up about it. Well, we've done it a couple times. It's kind of one of the things as a family that we try to do as often as we can. When we post the kids on Friday, we have a little bit more information. I mean, I could put a book up on every one of them. And on the kids that have on their list that they're one of their dreams is to go to Disney World, we try to fulfill that as much as we can. We're blessed to have the opportunity to bring them to Orlando. And I think I've become pretty much professional tour guide down here. And it is, it's, it's great to see most of these kids have never flown in an airplane. They've never stayed in a hotel. They've never eaten a meal where you pay for it after uh, you eat it. And just to see them, it's, and they don't, a lot of them don't understand as much the stories because they weren't raised uh, with Mickey and Minnie and Donald and Goofy and Pluto and Star Wars and Marvel, whatever it is. I mean, they know more as they're older. So the older uh, the Marvel and some of those things, the Harry Potter, they may know those, but they don't know the Dumbos and the Cinderella's and, and so, but the awe of just seeing them with the rides and the lights and the popcorn and it's, it's, it's a pretty much of a game changer. And I don't, it's, we don't need attention for it. I don't want to run a flag up a pole. It's just something that we're blessed to have the ability to do. And we try to do it as often as we can. We've done it and we've had lots of kids here in the last few months and we have several more getting ready to come. And it's not only Disney. We try to look at what these kids need for Christmas. We took all the kids and we said, if you want something for Christmas, put it on a list. We did this like in October. And I don't care if it was an iPhone or Ugg boots or Air Jordans or ear pods or but because so many times we people pull a name for a kid at Christmas and they just walk down an aisle and grab some suckers and some socks and some underwear. And look, is that what you want for Christmas? Hell to the no, excuse my language. So we took these kids list and we said, okay, here, John wants a pair of Air Jordans and Susie wants a pair of Ugg boots. And this child over here wants, you know, something else. And, and so we, we put them, we made it very easy. We got our techie people to put the kid up with their picture, here's the five things they want. And, and we sent it out to a group of, of, of like-minded people, the community that we just talked about that we'd built around us. I sent it out to my community and um, Molly's listening to me, not Molly, 800, 900 gifts. I can't remember the number over that, but every child got something they wanted. And, and we made it easy because you, ch you, you picked a, a child, you hit their picture, you hit their want list, you hit their list. We sent it via Amazon. It went to the foster care agency and the foster care agency delivered it. We made it simple, but I felt so good because I know they were actually getting gifts that they wanted. And, and so that was great. There's so many opportunities for people to get involved with and and we certainly, you can jump on mine or Rob's because we, we kind of post each other a lot. And when it comes to the hot Easter, Easter's coming up, there's things that you can do. There's all kind of holiday uh, between uh, here and Christmas you can get involved with, with foster kids, but doing something with them, I, I kid you not, we did, we had a group in and they were so fascinated when they got to the hotel because most of the kids had never ridden an elevator before and they wanted to go up and down the elevator. So while I tell you that bringing a child to Walt Disney World is something that you might not be able to do, I totally understand that. But I do feel like that you could mentor a child and that you could sit down with that child, read to them from one eye, 
hour, take them to wherever, ride an elevator with them. We, we had a short version of the story. We had a kid, I tell it a lot that we were distributing juice boxes and cupcakes. And this was a six year old little boy in the United States of America. He had never eaten a cupcake, never eaten a cupcake, process that. So, and this was not out in the country somewhere. This was in an inner city situation. So cupcakes, elevator rides, that's giving of your time. That's giving of yourself. If you can give monetarily, you should. To whom much is given, much is required. But if you can't, there are other things that you can do. So we're just blessed with the ability to do Disney World. And it, But there's take them to ride a go-kart, play putt-putt. Just do you something. spending time changes do lives. Do something. You know, the, it, it, I and I agree with you. I, I agree with the fact that, you know, not all of us live in Florida are able to do that. But the, every one of us have the opportunity to do something to help change a child's life as they are in the system. And to me, I think that is a that that is a key. And I have met those kids who, you know, I've taken to a restaurant and they have had never eaten at a restaurant before. I mean, that to just it's just blows my mind it's you know and and i think that that we have the opportunity to do that i will tell you though your christmas um the way your team set it up it was so easy and i want to tell everybody by the way i heard, you know leanne mentioned you know the ear pods and the and the jordans but there were a lot and i mean a lot of items on there that children were asking for that they should have already had and so they were very cost effective, you know, so I don't want people to think that, oh, you can't, you know, I can't even get my own kid a pair of eyes. No, there were things on those lists. Le Leanne, I went through the list and I was, I was surprised. I was like, screw this for Christmas. This child should have this no matter what. I um, so I, I hope that, you know, you do that again this year. Um, you know, I hope that you, you, because I think that, that it, it was enjoyable. I know it was enjoyable for my kids to, you know, anybody to that to did it. So, you know, you is that is that part of the getting out of your comfort zone that you always talk about? I think anything that we've talked about is getting out of your comfort zone. So many people have gotten in the habit blocking themselves in at, you know, five o'clock and not getting out and, and making a difference and not wanting to volunteer and not wanting to go to a, a public school and mentor a child. We, it is a proven fact that if a child's in the, the children in the public school system have one hour a day of extra help, that their numbers just ex increase exponentially in everything, whether it's reading or their test scores, it's just crazy. So there are so many opportunities and we have a lot listed on our website, on the foundation website. I know Comfort Cases does. You can DM us if you go, hey, I live in yeah. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, or I live in San Jose, California, or Minneapolis, Minnesota, or Charlotte, North Carolina, wherever you are. We, over this journey, have, have collected agencies and foundations and philanthropic groups that are honestly making a difference and moving the needle. Because there's some, honestly, that I don't think they really are. And um, I'd say that. But there are so mm -hmm. many. The good outweighs the bad. And unfortunately, so many times we only hear the bad stuff. But there are great people doing good things every single day. And I, I just think that we all have the ability. If we just have to do a little bit, it takes a little bit of jumping in and, and investigating and figuring out where you want to go, and what your time frame is. It's going to take a little bit of time. Yep. But once you find that path, once you get in a lane, I think you'll just flourish in it, really, because we have found that once you start volunteering and giving, it becomes infectious and you want to do it more and more and more. Yeah, no, I can tell you that I have volunteers that, you know, we're on our 10th anniversary this year with comfort cases, and I have volunteers that have been volunteering at our center packing cases for almost 10 years, and they come in every week, and they say it makes their heart smile. And you know what, I'm going to take this line from you, because you actually said this, um, there is no such thing as an overnight success. And, you know, there's no such thing as an overnight success. And you're exactly right. There is opportunities for every one of us to be able to help kids who are in the foster care system. And I love that. Listen, everyone, I am asking you all to do me a big favor. I'm asking you, I know I ask a lot at times every week when I go on my Facebook lives, I, I'm always asking, but listen, this is an easy click. 
It's an easy click. Okay, so first I want you to find my friend Leanne on Instagram. Okay, you can also find her on Facebook. She does post a child on, on the same child on her Facebook, but you know what? Find her on Instagram. And then what I want you to do me a favor, follow her. And then on Friday, I want you to just watch her, her site. Watch it on other days too. By the way, I love your bubble wands. I love <laughs> you, I, everybody. There's a big, you know, you there are opportunities that you might even win one of those bubble wands. Right. We're getting ready to do a big gift. So I love I, 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 it. I, love I need it. to tie it in with, uh, with the whole May and Mother's Day and awareness of foster kids. So yeah, Thank you for reminding me of that. That's a good catch. You, 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 you can tell I follow you. So I know you <laughs> love bubbles and you love the amazing yeah. ones. But listen, on Fridays, once you see that post, that post of that child who's looking for that forever family, do me a favor, push the share button. It's easy. You push the share button and you can share it and you can share it. And, you know, um, Lee and I are about the same age. So we remember this Fabergé commercial where they would say, you tell someone and so on. And it got bigger and bigger and bigger on the TV. That's what we want. That's what we want. So listen, Leanne, thank you so much. Thank you for being my friend. Thank you for mentoring me and really standing next to me through this, you know, what I feel is it's our mission. Um, and as you say, I wake up every morning and for me, it's how can I serve someone? Whether it's opening up the door, whether it's putting a smile or, you know, having eye contact with that person on the street and smile. Sometimes that might be the only smile. So listen, thank you. Okay. Thank you. A good human. Listen, everyone, this is another amazing episode of Fostering Change. Um, Remember, you can listen to this on all of the podcast platforms. You can see this actually on our YouTube. Please do me a favor. Make sure that you share it as well. And if you have any questions, or maybe there's a guest that you would like to have back, because we know Leanne's been on our podcast before, or a new guest, please do me a favor and email me at fosteringchange at comfortcases.org. Take care, everyone. I want to say thank you to each and every one of you for listening or watching the latest episode of Fostering Change. All of us on our team hope that you've learned something new today and have been inspired to be a good human. Now, just a reminder that you can always find Fostering Change on your favorite channels on Google, Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, and others including, of course, comfortcases.org. I want to give a big thank you to all of you for joining us each and every week. And a reminder that if you have a suggestion for a guest, or maybe you might have a question about today's podcast, or are interested in becoming a sponsor of Fostering Change, please don't hesitate to email me personally at fosteringchange at comfortcases.org. Now, that's it for now. Thanks again, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Take care.